In the distant, captivating era of the ancients, approximately 375 million years ago, we find ourselves immersed in a captivating tale of evolution and adaptation, a narrative that unfolds around two extraordinary creatures that symbolize the very essence of evolutionary breakthrough, the Titanicthes, or more commonly known as the Titan, and the Devonsky Sharks. These aquatic titans served as a testament to the endless possibilities of life, standing at the intersection of two distinct realms, water and land. The Titanicthus, a veritable icon of ancient life on our planet, has earned this distinction due to its unique position straddling two worlds. It was not merely a fish, but an amphibious creature that could, with equal confidence, navigate both shallow waters and solid ground, using its remarkable limbs as a means of locomotion. These limbs were unlike any other fish of the time, boasting plaid-like bones with structures similar to our hands and legs. The Titanicthus was a master of adaptation, evolving to survive in a variety of environments. In shallow waters, it could hide from larger water predators and find new food sources, various invertebrates and small animals dwelling on the border of land and water. On land, it could evade danger and seek food in previously unreachable locations. The competition in the aquatic environment during the Devonian period was fierce, and some creatures, such as the Titanicthus, seized the opportunity to explore new niches for survival. The Titanicthus thrived in the warm, shallow waters, where it could exploit the diversity of life present, from tiny invertebrates to small, agile fish. As it navigated the complex ecosystem, it faced numerous threats, from larger predators to harsh environmental conditions. However, the Titanicthus was not just another fish. Its unique limbs allowed it to venture onto land, where it could find food and safety that were unavailable to its aquatic counterparts. The offspring of the Titanicthus, like any good fish, developed in the water. However, young individuals quickly acquired the ability to stay on land for short periods. This adaptation granted them a significant survival advantage, allowing them to evade danger and seek food in previously unreachable locations. As they grew, they gradually developed true limbs capable of supporting their bodies on land for extended periods. Thus, the great transition from aquatic to terrestrial life began, paving the way for all ground-dwelling animals, including ourselves. The Devonsky sharks, on the other hand, had already appeared much earlier, around 400 million years ago, and were already distinguished by an incredible adaptability to life in the water expanses. These ancient sharks were older than the first trees and were characterized by a keel-like structure making them light and quick and incredibly sharp teeth capable of regenerating after loss. They were masters of the deep, with their keen senses and robust bodies allowing them to dominate the ecosystem, occupying the upper levels of the food chain. Another crucial factor in the success of the Devonsky sharks was their reproductive strategy. Unlike most ancient fish, they gave birth to live young, significantly increasing the chances of survival for the young sharks, who were immediately ready for active feeding and independent navigation. The Devonsky sharks also formed complex hunting strategies, using their excellent senses, such as smell and a sideline, to detect prey at great distances. This allowed them to dominate the ecosystem, occupying the upper levels of the food chain. The presence of the Devonsky sharks had a profound impact on the evolutionary processes of other marine inhabitants, stimulating the development of protective mechanisms and promoting evolutionary diversity. Some creatures, such as the trilobite, developed hard shells to protect themselves from the shark's sharp teeth. The trilobite was a successful and diverse group of marine arthropods, characterized by their segmented bodies and multiple legs, they evolved over millions of years, growing more complex and diverse, eventually becoming extinct at the end of the Devonian period. Let's delve deeper into the stories of three particularly special sharks from the Devonian period. The first is the treasure of the Scylla. This ancient creature, estimated to have lived around 370 million years ago during the Sofa period, was not necessarily attractive, but it was undeniably adaptable to life in the ocean. The treasure of the Salah boasted a slender, elegant body, resembling a race car in its streamlined form, and an additional feature that may have been its most significant advantage, flexibility and speed. Imagine an ancient eel poised to lunge at any moment and swiftly chase down its prey like a missile. The treasure of the Salah's teeth were small but very sharp, ideally suited for capturing small, mobile prey, such as small fish and cephalopods. 
Though not the most formidable weapons, they were more than sufficient for its lifestyle. The treasure of the cellar could be considered the gourmet of the Devonsky period, with a preference for small, appetizing seafood. Interestingly, the treasure of the Salah was one of the first sharks to use live birth. The offspring were born fully prepared for independent life, immediately launching into swimming and ready to hunt for anything that moved. Parents were probably proud of their offspring, though the name Sela may not have been widely accepted for taking care of the young. The young treasure of the Sela received complete freedom of action from birth, a factor that played a crucial role in the history of the ocean, paving the way for many species that live there today. Another intriguing shark from the Devonsky period is the Gelco prion. This shark, with its tooth spiral, is a testament to the creative forces of evolution. Let's explore its unique features. The Gelco prion lived approximately 290 million years ago during the Devonian period. Its body was rather elongated, with a slender, sleek profile. However, its most distinctive feature was its tooth spiral. This spiral of teeth located inside its lower jaw resembled a circular saw enabling the shark to deftly cut soft squids and other cephalopods, which were likely its primary prey. Scientists are still debating the purpose and function of the tooth spiral. It is thought that the Gelco prion used this spiral to efficiently cut through the soft bodies of its prey. The tooth spiral was a complex mechanism for the time, and it is unclear why the shark needed such a design. Nature, it seems, has its own plans. The size of the Gelco prion varied, with some species reaching up to 7 meters in length, making them an impressive presence in the ocean. Unfortunately for our safety, these ancient creatures lived millions of years ago, so the chance of encountering them today is virtually non-existent. Finally, let's discuss the shark ginsa, or pan-enforcement baptoxin. This shark lived approximately 100 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period, and earned its name due to its knife-like teeth. After all, its teeth were a true work of art, long, sharp, and incredibly effective. If there were a rating of the most formidable smiles of the Mesozoic, it would undoubtedly take the first place. But why gins? If you recall the advertisement for knives that can cut anything, the shark ginza could easily serve as an advertising agent for such products. Its teeth were so sharp and durable that they effortlessly cut through the flesh and even the bones of its prey. These were versatile tools for the Mesozoic seas. The length of the shark Ginsa reached 7 meters, making it one of the largest predators of its time. Its diet was incredibly diverse, ranging from fish and cephalopods to small sea reptiles. If you were in the ocean during that time, you would surely not want to cross paths with this shark if you did not enjoy extreme experiences. From the perspective of the evolution of the shark Ginsa, it was extremely successful, flourishing over millions of years and driving other marine inhabitants to develop new survival strategies. Imagine being a small fish during that time, and your primary motivation for evolution is to avoid becoming breakfast for the shark ginsa. Motivation does not get much more compelling than that. The real giants of the ancient oceans were the Dumliomas. The name sounds intimidating, doesn't it? These were giant panzerfish, the size of a small bus, with lengths reaching 9 meters. Their jaws were so powerful that they could easily eat even the toughest armor of other ocean dwellers. The jaws of the Dumliomas were unlike any we are familiar with, featuring huge serrated plates that acted as giant scissors or nippers. The thought of a fish with giant scissors instead of teeth is certainly unnerving. And the most surprising part, these teeth never stopped growing. They were simply constantly updated and regenerated. The Dumliomas were not particularly quick swimmers, relying instead on the element of surprise and their great power. We can say that the Dumliomas were an ancient ocean terminator, slow but incredibly effective and persistent. So the Dumliomas were not just large predators, but a true sensation of their time. Their amazing adaptations allowed them to become the top of the food chain of the ancient seas. Although we are grateful today that we cannot meet them alive, it is worth acknowledging that the Dumliomas left an indelible mark in the history of life on Earth. The tales of these ancient behemoths serve as a testament to the boundless creativity and adaptability of life, a testament to the dynamic, ever-changing world we inhabit.